Ed Lamb, BYU assistant head coach, before media day. You're starting early. Yeah, I just I got the call, and here I am. I don't know. I don't know what to to attribute this honor to, but uh, I'm here. I'm <laughs> the warm up straight after from the, here yeah. to camp, uh, camping with the the uh, young high schoolers this week and teaching those guys some football. But it's nice to be here for a few minutes. Thanks. It's great to have you with those camps. Um, how, certainly, you identify some kids before they ever come to camp, or if they ever come to camp. But at what age are you identifying some of these potential recruits when they come to a BYU football camp? Oh, that's that's great, really. I think uh, probably when they get in about junior high, yeah, we we have uh, we have a what we call a Cubs camp, which is really little kids, and that's all about fun. And really, they those kids enjoy being with our players probably more than us. And then when they get into junior high, they really start working on their skills a little more. We're looking at height and weight and speed, and sometimes we'll pull a, an eighth grader up to the varsity field, <clears throat> and uh, those camps run kind of simultaneously on adjacent fields. That seems like quite the impact on a program. When you take a step back and, and think about the access and, and when you begin to actually see some of these players. Absolutely. Yeah. And BYU, I think, has an advantage that way. You know, we always we get hung up sometimes on BYU's disadvantages or challenges. But one of the advantages is there are young kids from five years old and, and up that want to come to BYU. They're dying to come to camp and make an impression. In the past, there was uh, this idea that, hey, we need you to come to camp if we're going to offer you. Is that a mm-hmm. thing? Does a, does a player need to come to camp? Or could you offer them without coming to camp? We certainly do offer them without coming to camp. Um, and uh, and it, last week, there were several players who had been offered and then came to camp only just to meet our players. They, they didn't actually participate in camp. So I think... Um, just wanted to be here? Y- yeah, they, they wanted to be here. Kind of an unofficial visit. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Assistant head coach Ed Lamb with us on BYU Sports Nation. I know you don't have a ton of vacation time because you're obviously very busy with summer camps and media day, but in the limited time that you will have off, what's the what's the vacation spot this summer, coach? We we have an annual tradition in our family. We drive uh Sarah's um Sarah's father has a, a farm in Iowa and uh, he you know retired back to the family farm and so we always make that drive from wherever we have lived. We drive it and, and really enjoy the trip. We have some stops that we make. Glenwood Springs, Colorado is always oh, the first one. Beautiful. It's my kid's favorite spot. It's, my, it's one of my favorite spots. But really, I mean, other than that, it's I travel so much for work that it's about just being at home, you know, being at home, hanging out in the backyard and, and you know, doing doing the things that the kids do, soccer practice, dance, all that stuff. Do you have a catch with your kids in some random cornfield it's in, in Iowa? When it's in Iowa, it's have a catch. <laughs> other places, it's, yeah. Play catch. Play catch. Yeah, play catch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, uh, yeah. We, we each state that we go through, we try to try to pick up that culture a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this year we're going all the way back to Wisconsin, actually, through oh, nice. Iowa to Wisconsin, a, a lake house there. Sarah's sister has a, a house on the lake back there. Driving, all the way there. We're driving it. Wow. We're driving it. Okay. Yeah. You know, our our son. You've, you've met our son Edward, and he, you uh-huh. know, his autism and all that. But one of his favorite things is just driving in the car. Great. So Yeah. It's a kind of peace for everybody. I, I love it too. Happy. Like. Yeah. Like, my ideal situation in life would be to just drive across the country, see places, go to baseball games during the summer. That would be – hang out at the lake. That would be awesome. I'm, I'm with you. Some people might Let think me know if there's a spot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. My wife won't like me leaving my almost one-year-old, but whatever. Uh, yeah, Ben is there too, I guess. Uh, let's talk about some of the position battles coming up this fall uh, with the linebackers, middle linebacker. Obviously, that was kind of Butch Powers, and then Sione mm-hmm. Takitaki took that over. Yeah. So um, we're hearing about certain guys in the mix, but who's in the mix at middle linebacker? Really like the way uh, Jackson Kafusi played in the in the spring. He needs to continue just to improve his his body. You know, uh, coming back off of a mission, but just stronger and faster. But uh, he, he he has a lot of contact courage, and he was the guy who took the majority of reps. Peyton Wilgar um, took the spring semester off and is back now, and he looks really good. He we thought he was very good last year, and I, we're going to move him into the middle linebacker position. Uh, Alex Miskello was there a bit uh, as well in the in the spring, and so I think those three guys probably going in. But we also feel like like Zane Anderson, Isaiah Kalfusi, maybe Max Tooley, those guys could be middle linebackers as mm. well. So we want to keep it open and up in the air. It's disrespectful to the to the game to you know target somebody as first, second, and third right now. We just kind of leave it all open. Okay, so there is a chance that we could see one of those two guys that we all kind of anticipated would be on the edges, Isaiah Kofusi and Zane Anderson, move to the middle. Yeah, you, well, you certainly will. And a, a big part of what we do, depending on who we're playing, is our nickel defense. And, oh, yeah. And last year, both of those guys actually played middle linebacker. Not that uh, we don't actually call them that. And it, at the end, it, when we're 
analyzing the stats, we don't say, oh, they made two tackles from the middle linebacker position, and so nobody really notices it. But they've, they've played and lined up in the middle before. That versatility is nice, especially with Zane, who was a safety, and he can just be that guy right in the nickel, and Diane Gonwoloku can play. He's like a smaller linebacker in those situations. He certainly like can. Yeah. Um, let's talk about kicker. So Jake Oldroyd, the hero of the Arizona game, and then he gets hurt a couple games later. Green cleats and all. He's yeah. back from his mission. Uh, he and Skyler Southam, are they in a battle for the place kicker spot? Absolutely, yeah. And, and even if one of them had been clearly better in the spring, that's just that's just my philosophy, my personality. Everything's up for grabs. I think everything on the coaching staff should be up for grabs. You know, if we're not doing our jobs – you know, Kalani should feel comfortable at any time about shifting responsibilities. And, and uh, you know, I, the, for the players, to me, that's the only way to treat the game with respect is that you show up every day. It's not about the one guy. It's about the 122 other guys on the team. That's that's why competition is so important. Are you okay if Jake Oldroyd kicks in neon green cleats? Is that okay with you? It Don't care. against Arizona. Yeah. Don't okay. care. As long as it goes in? Didn't notice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never noticed that. <laughs> but no red. Everything yeah. else is good. Yeah. That's I mean, you know, if if, if Mick Hill or our equipment man or Brian Santiago, I know he's involved with, with the Nike relationship. I mean, if those guys have an issue, I'm a soldier. I'll make sure he's wearing the correct color. But no, I, I never <laughs> knew he was wearing a different color. <laughs> <laughs> BYU assistant head football coach Ed Lamb with us on BYU Sports Nation. It is the day before media day. Tomorrow we uh, roll out an annual program called the state of the program so the day before how would you in your words define the current state of the BYU football program uh, personally I think I think from the inside I'm talking right now like and that's what you're asking I think is is from me and and I think I can speak for a lot of our coaches especially those that have been through here and, and have been around for a long time this is a program that's been at the top the very top of college football. And so we're in a fragile state right now. There are advantages and disadvantages to independence. To reach the full potential of independence, we have to be nationally relevant. Like um, Now, there's some things we can't control. Like Even when I was a player, we won 14 games. We didn't get in the bowl game we wanted. We got in a very good bowl game. Some changes ensued in college football. That's the type of noise that BYU has to make. Anything less than that, in my mind, is a failure. We're not, I mean, we, we didn't, we didn't come here. Kalani didn't accept the job. I didn't come here to uh, just just kind of have the program maintain status quo. The, the only goal that we have is to make this a nationally relevant football program. And now that's playoffs and New Year's Six. So is that how you quantify that? Like, hey, we got to get to a New Year's Six at some point? Because that feels like you've got to go undefeated, and that's certainly a, a tough standard to get to, one that's only happened once in program history. I think it's all about the schedule. I think you, you see teams get into New Year's Six with less than an undefeated record. It's all about the schedule and what it is. And and when we start talking about individual games and goals within that, then you know right now it's 100% of our focus is just on beating Utah. When you talk about the state of the program, I think that's a larger scope that you're putting on that question. And, and so we have to... You know, yeah, we're we're talking about winning winning them all. Yeah. And without a conference, Jeremy and I have discussed this often on this program, and that is if BYU doesn't have a conference to be nationally relevant, you probably need to be nationally ranked. So where does that factor into all of this and, and what you're aiming for and, and trying to get to? Yeah, exactly right. So so one you know, disadvantage of independence been talked about a lot. One of the advantages is you go to New Year's Six Bowl or playoffs. You're not sharing that revenue with the conference, right? And BYU sorely needs more resources, right, to compete at a national level. But as is often the case, and, and most of the teams that are at that level, the, the resources don't come first. It's it's the victories and the national relevance, and that's what brings the resources in. And, and that's the job we've been tasked to do, and we don't shy away from it. Yet we've seen that several times in independence, uh, BYU's been able to get off to a hot start and and boom, you're in. You're being discussed. You're ranked mm-hmm. 20th last year after Wisconsin and McNeese, and it's like, hey, this is working, right? So how do you get into that? I guess second month, continuing that momentum is the question. It feels like. Oh, well, that, that's a great question. I think um, certainly depth from a from a coaching standpoint, we have to look at how we develop depth, and that's that's recruiting, and then we develop depth throughout the year in practice and, and putting players into game situations, sometimes forcing them into game situations that they may not be ready for. And then um, and then I, I think the other thing that we just have to continue to do is is find a way to have a message 
that can last not just through the game or through a couple of games, but through the season. And that's why I really bristle sometimes when I hear people say, you know, like, oh, the first four, you've got these these great games, the first Shoot, four that's games. that's what we call it. Hey, man, game, yeah. <laughs> hey, game five, what do we do? You know, not, like, this is about one game at a time, and it's about the whole season. And for us on the coaching staff or the younger players, it's about the season stacking up behind each other. And perhaps you can talk about that. So we, we've sensed a little bit of trepidation with how much is going into the Utah, the Utah game. Yeah, It's great to have Utah as the first game, but it's like, hey, 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 there's Tennessee the next week. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess that's a challenge like you're talking about of, guess what? We're going to play in front of 100,000 the next week. It's not all about Utah, but at first it is. It's a delicate balance, I guess. It, it is, and, it, and it'll be the same challenge, hopefully, and, and kind of a reset uh, after the Tennessee game, right? yeah. you, you reset that. But but hopefully right now our guys are getting in the, the habit of Utah's our next opponent. That's 100% of our efforts. If they were our second opponent, we would not be talking like that. Sure. Ed Lamb with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's discuss some of the knowns and unknowns of this team. In your mind, what is the most prominent known? Like if you had to put your finger on one thing and say, I know I'm going to get this for my team, what is it? Uh, physical effort. Contact courage. Those, I mean, that's all. That's one thing. I hope. I hope you'll accept that as a single answer. But contact courage. Contact. I courage, like that yeah. phrase. Yeah, yeah, BYU brings that year in and year out. Even even when BYU was known as uh, the, the at the forefront of the passing game in college football, it was when you talk to coaches or opponents um, that were on those teams we were playing. It was the physicality of BYU football that separated BYU from the rest. Okay. Now on the other side, what about the unknown? What's the biggest unknown in your mind? I think the, the it's probably the same every year that it's the, the chemistry of the of the team and the coaching staff how it comes together and are we able to bring out the best in each other. Regarding the schedule, each one feels unique in that it's different teams, it's different spots. September is certainly uh, unique to BYU though. BYU is the only team in the country playing four Power Fives to start the season, mm-hmm. and it's not like these are Power Fives that have, uh, you know, Rutgers uh, emerged into the Big Ten, you know, later in the... These are teams that are quality, right? Um, how, do you, how do you manage that in terms of you want to do something special, but no one else in college football is playing those four teams in a row? Mm-hmm. So there, there's the opportunity. Yeah, you just said it. We want to do something special. And uh, and I, I, I'm so glad that the schedule is as it is. And if you look at uh, for years further out, and I, and I know you have, it, it gets even more challenging or... As far as name recognition goes, you know, we, for our players that play in these games, they know that, uh, you know, some of these, these teams that are nationally recognized or that the fans maybe think are, are a lot stronger, they're not necessarily stronger than uh, the other teams that we play. It's just kind of tradition sometimes sure. speaks loudly when, in that discussion. But it's one game at a time, and, and we get excited about the game that is. We've been comparing the challenge, and it is a significant one for BYU football, to a challenging golf course. And you play golf, and you play it well. I've played with you. I've seen this often. But you're stepping up to number 17, the Island Green, to TPC Sawgrass against the schedule. And just what if you hit that magical shot, right? That's right. Yeah. You win a car. <laughs> the risk reward uh, yeah. it is exactly. the risk reward well it let's is. give you some BYU Sports Nation karma to survive media day you survive this and uh, enjoy the long road trip to Wisconsin man that's going to be great yeah, thanks guys okay, I appreciate it